Ibrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And we are still in Chapter 2, Cellular Respiration. My name is Madam Siti Hajar Binti Nur al -Shudin. And for this lecture, I'm going to explain the final stage of aerobic cellular respiration, which is oxidative phosphorylation. Or in this lecture, maybe I'm going to use a short form of OP during my explanation. So let's begin. OP is the last step in aerobic cellular respiration. It is a process of synthesizing a vast major number of ATP, which means here the ATP production is very huge. So it happens inside the mitochondria, specifically at the inner mitochondrial membrane, or we know it as a Christi, and therefore the condition requires oxygen and classified as aerobic respiration. OP is divided into two different parts. The first one is electron transport chain, ETC, and the second part is chemiosmosis together with the ATP synthesis. By looking at the terminology of itself, its oxidative is referring to the electron that is going to be transported in order to bind with the oxygen, while the phosphorylation itself means synthesis of ATP molecules. Before OP begin, the catabolisms or the breakdown of glucose by glycolysis and citric acid cycle also generate some ATP molecules. Do you still remember how many ATP molecules produced in glycolysis and citric acid cycle? So, for example, in glycolysis, there are two ATP being produced, similar with the CAC, also producing two molecules of ATP. But both of these ATP production are using substrate-level phosphorylation mechanisms. Apart from that, there are byproducts of glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, and citric acid cycle, which is the NADH and FADH2, which is they act as an electron carriers. Both of these electron carriers are incredibly important byproducts because they will donate this electron to ETC and power up the ATP synthesis to produce a large amount of ATP molecules. So in this figure, showing the process of glycolysis where the pyruvate is being produced and continue with the pyruvate oxidation, later entering the citric acid cycle that occur before oxidative phosphorylation. All the electron carriers that have been produced in previous stages will proceed and undergo oxidative phosphorylation. As you can see here, the ATP that been produced from the glycolysis and citric acid cycle, the mechanism used to produce the ATP is substrate level phosphorylation. But in the final stage, the, aerob the final stage of aerobic cellular respiration, the ATP is produced through oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, let's recap how many electrons carriers have been produced. Uh, in the previous stages or reaction for the breakdown of one molecule of glucose. So in the first stage of aerobic cellular respiration, which is the glycolysis, they are producing two pyruvate, two molecules of ATP and two molecules of NADH. While in the second reaction or the link reaction known as pyruvate oxidation, it produced two molecules of acetyl A, two carbon dioxide and two molecules of NADH. And the second, in the second stage of aerobic cellular respiration, which is CAC, it produced 6 NADH, 2 FADH2, 4 carbon dioxide, and 2 ATP is formed. So, as I mentioned earlier, all the electron carriers that produce from the previous stages will proceed to continue in the last stage of aerobic cellular respiration, which is oxidative phosphorylation. So now, let me further explain on the OP. If this OP use high energy of electron to generate ATP, where the electron will drop free energy as they pass down into ETC. Electron that carried by the NADH and FADH2 from previous stages are transferred along the chain until they ultimately donated the electron to oxygen. So as oxygen receiving the electron, it will reduce to form water. Most of the chain components are the proteins, which exist in the multi-protein complexes. And the NADH and FADH2 is the energy-rich molecule 
because it contains a pair of electrons with high potential of energy. All right, so this is an OP which presented in a diagram. By looking at this diagram, here is the series of multi-protein complexes that involve in OP as level as protein complex 1, protein complex 2, protein complex 3, and protein complex 4. Not to forget, there is another protein called ATP synthase. First thing first, you should able to recognize the area inside the mitochondria. So the top area in the mem is the intermembrane space, while the middle area is the inner mitochondrial membrane, and the bottom area is the mitochondrial matrix. And OP occurred at the inner mitochondrial membrane, also known as the cristae. The second thing, technically, there are two distinct parts here, which is the ETC, electron transport chain, and also the chemiosmosis, that both of these make up the oxidative phosphorylation. So let's begin with the first part of OP, which is the electron transport chain, ETC. So ETC is a process where electrons are being transferred by NADH and FADH2 through four major protein series in order to combine with the oxygen producing the water. So in a simple word, from the, the electron that carried by the NADH and FADH2 from previous stages, okay, they will go to the OP and pass down the electron through four major proteins. And at the end, the electron must combine with the oxygen. After oxygen combined with the electron, it will produce in the water. Okay, so here, <clears throat> um, I have mentioned to you uh, several times, the main goal of OP is to produce a large amount of ATP, right? But in ETC, there does, uh, ETC does not generate ATP directly. Instead, it is only playing a role in transferring the electron in order, from the food in order to bind with the oxygen. Now, let's take a look on the component of ETC. So ETC consists of four integral proteins complex uh, that embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So let's get to know the name of the protein complex. So the first one, protein complex one, is known as NADH dehydrogenase. Protein complex two is known as succinate dehydrogenase. Protein complex three is cytochrome reductase, or also known as cytochrome BF complex. And protein, the last protein complex is protein complex 4, which is cytochrome oxidase. Apart from that, each protein complex are linked uh, with the two small electron mobile carrier, which is made from lipids. Okay, so they are known as ubiquinone or coenzyme Q. And the second one is cytochrome C. All right, again, I would like to highlight and please remember that ETC does not generate ATP yet, but it only involves the movement of electron, which is from the NADH and FADH2 until the electron unite or combine with the oxygen in order to form water. Okay, as you can see here, I have illustrated and labeled the area involved in OP inside the mitochondria similar to the diagram that I have shown earlier. So along the inner mitochondrial membrane, we have a series of protein complexes from PC1 until PC4 together with the ATP synthase. Additionally, there are another two electron mobile carrier known as ubiquinone or here I label as a Q. Okay, and cytochrome C level as CYTC. As I mentioned earlier, there are two distinct parts of OP. So the protein complex from 1 until 4, including the Q and CYTC, is known as electron transport chain because this is where the electron is being transported from one complex to the other. And the ATP synthase, which is responsible to generate ATP, is technically known as chemiosmosis. So therefore, the combination of ETC together with chemiosmosis is known as OP. Alright, so now, how does the ETC works? I hope you still remember the main input of OP is the electron carriers of NADH and FADH2. So let's illustrate why those molecules are very important. So here you have the NADH. So energy H that come approach to protein complex one, it will donate the electron to protein complex one and become oxidized to form NAD plus. 
when the protein complex 1 receives electron, it will become reduced and it will couple with the pumping of H plus from matrix to intermembrane space. So here, again, I would like to highlight NADH approaching the protein complex 1 and donating the electron to protein complex 1 become oxidized to form NAD+. As protein complex 1 receives the electron, it will reduce and couple with the pumping of H plus from matrix okay, to the intermembrane space. So next, the electron from PC1, our protein complex 1, will transfer to ubiquinone or Q. Okay, so next, the second electron carrier, which is the FADH2, where this FADH2 comes along and approaching the protein complex 2. Okay, so they come to protein complex 2, it will donate the electron to protein complex 2 and become oxidized to form FAD. When protein complex 2 receive electron, it becomes reduced. But, however, the protein complex 2 does not have enough energy to pump H plus or proton ion from matrix to intermembrane space. So, there is no pumping of proton happen here. So, next, from protein complex 2, the electron will transfer to ubiquinone or Q. So, I would like to pause for a while and highlight again. So, the pathway of electron from NADH start from protein complex 1 while the pathway of electron from FADH2 starts from protein complex 2. And in protein complex 1, there is a pumping of H, uh, proton ion from matrix to intermembrane space, while in protein complex 2, there is no pumping of proton that uh, occurred uh, here. Okay? So at this point, the electron from Q will be transferred to protein complex 3. So when the protein complex 3 receives electron and become reduced, so it will couple with the pumping of proton from matrix to intermembrane space, just like you see that happen in protein complex 1. So next, from electron from protein complex 3 will move to CYTC. Okay, and the electron from CYTC now will get passed to protein complex 4. The same thing happened here. When the protein complex 4 receiving the electron, it will become reduced. So it coupled with the pumping of proton from matrix to intermembrane space. So lastly, the electron from protein complex now or protein complex 4 now will be transferred to the final electron receptor, which is the oxygen. So when the oxygen unites with the electron in the mitochondrial matrix, the oxygen will reduce to form water. Okay, so let me highlight again the pathway of the electron. Okay, the electron from NADH will pass to protein complex 1, while electron from FADH2 will uh, pass the electron to protein complex 2. Okay, so then the electron from protein complex 1 and 2 will transfer to Q next to protein complex 3, next to CYTC, next to protein complex 4, and lastly, to the final electron receptor, which is oxygen. So oxygen receive electron, become reduced, and forming water. All right. <clears throat> as you can uh, remember also, as the electron pass from one complex to another, energy coupling occurred where it drive the protein complex 1, 3, and 4 to pump proton ion from matrix to intermembrane space. But remember, in protein complex 2, there is no pumping of proton from matrix to intermembrane space. As you can see here, there is an accumulation of proton at the intermembrane space as compared to mitochondrial matrix, which um, create a proton con concentration gradient. And please note that uh, the FADH2 may pump a fewer number of proton. Why? because FADH2 start passing the electron at protein complex 2. So they only pump electron, sorry, they only pump the proton ion at protein complex 3 and 4 only. As compared to NADH, it occurred, the, uh, the pumping of uh, proton occurred at 1, 3 and 4. So that's all the explanation on ETC.
So here I have summarized all about the ATC process. So during the transporting of electron, the protein and electron carriers alternate between oxidation and reduction reaction, where the NADH and FADH2 become oxidized, so as they oxidize, they forming NAD plus and FAD. While the oxygen is reduced until uh, as the oxygen receives the electron, so it reduces to form water. So this situation will lead to the increasing of proton gradient potential. So the movement of electron along the uh, trans electron transport chain will contribute to the process of chemiosmosis, which is the next part of oxidative phosphorylation that I'm going to explain after this. So let's have a, a 10 second break. So then can we continue with the chemiosmosis? <clears throat> All right, so is it 10 seconds already? So let's start with the chemiosmosis. All right, so this is the second part of OP, which is the chemiosmosis. It also has energy coupling mechanism. So it is defined as a process where the proton is forced down the concentration gradient across the membrane, which drive the production of ATP. So now, here happened the production of ATP. In previous ETC, only transferring the electron to oxygen. But in chemiosmosis, there is a, a side effect or the uh, effects from the ETC that uh, contribute uh, to the production of ATP here. So, <clears throat> The proton in the intermembrane space will uh, move back to the mitochondrial matrix and uh, passing through a proton channel called ATP synthase. So ATP synthase is the enzyme that responsible during the ATP production or ATP phosphorylation. It helps uh, to bind the adenosine diphosphate with the inorganic phosphate to produce ATP by using the azagonic flow of proton ion. So let's get back to the illust illustration of the OP. So I'm going to explain on the chemiosmosis part. I hope you still remember what happened uh, during the ETC just now. So as the electron pass at the piece, uh, protein complex 1, 3 and also protein complex 4, okay, it drives the pumping of proton ion from the mitochondrial matrix to intermembrane space. Okay, so this situation creates a proton concentration gradient where the concentration of proton in intermembrane space is slightly higher than the mitochondrial matrix. Okay, so at this point, the ATP synthase will come into play role. It's play role. Okay, so um, as it happened uh, in ETC, the pumping of H plus from matrix to intermembrane space, it creates a concentration gradient. So you can see here the concentration of proton is higher compared to mitochondrial matrix. Then this will drive the process of chemiosmosis. Okay, so as the proton uh, will flow down their concentration gradient, as you all know, uh, each molecule eh, will flow from higher concentration to a lower concentration in order to achieve its equilibrium, right? So in this situation, the proton from intermembrane space here will diffuse back to mitochondrial matrix uh, via ATP synthase. Therefore, the flow of a uh, proton here down their concentration gradient will release energy, which is a proton motive force, which is used in order uh, to combine the adenosine diphosphate with phosphate to produce ATP. So that is how ATP is being synthesized. There will be a large amount of ATP produced here since you have a large amount of proton uh, in the uh, intermembrane space that will flow down your concentration gradient via ATP synthase. Okay, so here I also have summarized the chemiosmosis process. What is actually happened during the chemiosmosis? So the proton is forced uh, to move back from the intermembrane space towards the um, mitochondrial matrix via ATP synthase. Okay, as the proton moves uh, across the ATP synthase, the ADP will bind with the phosphate and forming the ATP. 
Okay, because of the chemical formation of ATP is driven by the diffusion force similar to osmosis. That's why this process uh, is called as chemiosmosis. So I hope that you uh, can understand what is actually happened during the oxidative phosphorylation. Remember, where does this oxidative phosphorylation take place? It is at the inner mitochondrial membrane. And then there is two different parts, which is electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. So whatever happened in the ETC, okay, the consequences after the ETC contribute to the, uh, the next process or the next part of uh, oxidative phosphorylation, which is the chemiosmosis. So remember, in ETC, there is no production of ATP happen here. Okay, only the transferring of electron from one complex to another complex until they combine with the oxygen, forming the water. And in chemiosmosis, there is a production of ATP, but it is a driven force by the proton concentration gradient at the intermembrane space. So the proton must be flowed down back to uh, mitochondrial matrix and the energy uh, of uh, the proton pumping here is used to build up the ATP by combining the adenosine diphosphate with the phosphate. So here, the summary on the oxidative phosphorylation stage. So the process involves two uh, uh, parts, which is ETC and chemiosmosis. So overall, OP producing water and also ATP. It occurs at the inner mitochondrial membrane and it used the cofactor of uh, NAD plus and FAD in order to accept the electron from the glucose and they are forming the NADH and FADH2. So this NADH and FADH2 will carry the electron and transfer or donate to the oxygen forming the water. So remember guys, the final electron receptor for this process is the oxygen. All right, that's all uh, for this topic. So I will stop until here. I, If you have any questions, you may ask your lecturer for further explain and further discuss. I hope all of you enjoy learning this aerobic cellular respiration. So the next topic will be explained by Miss Sarah. So stay tuned, guys. So that's all from me. Thank you. Bye-bye.